All right, what I want to do here is talk a little bit about the for of loop. I'm on MDN real quick. I'm going to link this in the description. Basically, the for of statement creates a loop iterating over iterable objects, okay? If you go on this page, there's a lot of stuff on here that's a bit advanced for us, but you can go through and look at the syntax of how they set this up. You see where they say for, you have your variable here, which is gonna be declared with const let or var, okay? And then you have of your iterable, in this case, we're gonna be using an array, okay? And then you have what you wanna do inside of the curly braces. So let's look at our own example. And I'm just gonna grab something and paste it in. This will be in the description, so you don't have to watch me type this. Basically, we have two arrays here. The first one is required subjects, okay? So these are basically seven subjects that you would be required to take. Maybe you're a junior or senior in high school, something like that. So English, algebra, history, chemistry, typing, physical education, and computer science. Then here's another array with some extra courses. So biology, trigonometry, and Spanish. Maybe some stuff you wanted to do on the side. So first, I'm just going to build an array. So I'm going to go const my subjects, okay? And we already know how to merge these two arrays. You can use concat or we can use the spread operator. So I'm just going to use the spread operator. So I'm going to go the three dots with required subjects and then comma, the three dots again, and then we're going to do the extra courses, okay? So I'm just using my spread operator. We already know how to do this. So if you wanted to, you could console.log this my subjects guy, and basically you'd have one big array with all 10 subjects. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna use my for of loop here to iterate through, and I'm just gonna console.log each element of the array. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go for, okay, I'm gonna set this up just like you saw on MDN. I'm gonna declare this with const, okay? You wanna put const or let here, because again, if you don't, you're gonna have a leaked global, okay? So I'm gonna put const, let's call this subject. You can call this whatever you want. This is basically going to be each element of the array as you're looping through. Then I'm gonna put of, and the array name is my subjects. So I'm just going to type that. And then in here, this is what you want to do. So I'm going to just console.log this subject guy. Okay. And this is going to be just each element of the array as you go through. Again, this right here could be called whatever you want. It could be called item or element or my class, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So let me pop open the terminal and let's go ahead and run this real quick. So you see, you get all of these elements here printed to the console. So English, algebra, history, chemistry, typing, physical education, computer science, biology, trigonometry, and then Spanish. Now, one thing that you will use quite often when you use a regular for loop or if you use the for each method, you have access to the index, okay? Here, it's not quite so simple. You need to use something called the array.entries method, okay? And this is also a bit advanced for us at this point. But I want to show you the MDN page for this. I'll also link this in the description. If you root through this and you don't understand it, it's okay. We're going to get to this stuff later on. So you see the entries method returns a new array iterator object. You might be asking what that is, and we'll cover this later on. That contains the key value pairs for each index in the array. So basically what's going to happen is if I come up here and I go dot entries like this with some parentheses because I'm calling a method or calling a function, however you want to think about that. What's going to happen is when I console.log this subject guy now, what it's going to do is it's going to take each guy. So let's say I start with this one and then we're going to have an array that says zero because the index is going to be zero. And then it's going to also have English, right? So it'll have two elements and basically you're going to see that going all the way through, right? So the next one would be one and then algebra. Then you'd have two and then history, okay? So you could use this to get your index if you needed it, okay? So let's pop this open. Let's go ahead and clear this out and run this. And you see you get these arrays, right? So you have zero in English, one in algebra, two in history, so on and so forth. So you have an index now, and then you have the item. So let's go back and maybe let's use this to write a nice little sentence. You could use destructuring here if you wanted to, or you could just consider this as an array and use your square bracket notation. Whatever you want to do, I'll just do it both ways. So I'm just going to wrap this in some back ticks, and then I'll capitalize this and I'll say subject. And then maybe I'll do something like, Dallas and curly braces, I'll go subject with square brackets and zero. So remember, this is going to be the index. I'm going to go ahead and add one to this so it makes more sense. So this will be like subject one and then subject two, so on and so forth of school. And I'll just say is Dallas and curly braces. I'm going to use this subject again. Remember, this is an array now with square brackets and one, and that's the actual item or subject. Okay. So I'm going to put a period here or an exclamation point, whatever you want to do and run this again. And so now it's doing exactly what you want, right? So it says subject one of school is English, subject two of school is algebra, so on and so forth until you get to subject 10 of school is Spanish. Now, if you wanted to do this with the destructuring to get a little practice, 
you could wrap this in some square brackets, okay? And basically, because you know you're going to get the first guy is the index, you could call it index or I if you wanted to make it shorter. And then the second guy you're going to get is the subject, so let's call that the subject. And then you can come down here and adjust this and call this the index, okay? So the index plus one here, okay? And then down here, you wouldn't need the square brackets, just call it subject. If you pop this back open and we run this again, it does the exact same thing, right? So you can use destructuring there as well. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe this. I'm gonna give you something else. This will also be posted in the description. It's just the numbers one through 20 put into an array. I wanna quickly show you something that's different about the for each method and also the for of loop, okay? So with the for each method, there's no way to continue or break, right? You know if you're inside of a loop and you do the break statement, you're gonna exit the loop, okay? So if I did something like, let's say, my numbers dot for each, and let's say I wanted to put a little message to the console stating whether the number is divisible by two and maybe it's less than 11, okay? So maybe I only wanna print if that's the case. So let's go ahead and call this number, and you can use an arrow function or an anonymous function, whatever you wanna do. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to ask if the number is basically divisible by two. So remember you have your remainder operator and you're gonna ask if the result of this is zero. If it is, it's divisible by two. If it's not, then it's not, okay? Then I'm gonna use the logical and operator and I'm gonna say is the number less than 11, okay? So in this particular case, I'm just going to console.log, I'll say the number and then we'll reference that. So the number there, we'll say is divisible I don't know if I spelled that correctly. We'll go ahead and say by two and less than 11, okay? That's all we really wanna do. So basically, let me go ahead and run this. And you see you get everything you wanted, right? So the number two is divisible by two and less than 11, you know, so on and so forth. You expect two through 10 to be the result there. And that's what you get. Now, the problem with this is, with this for each method, you're gonna have to go through each one of these, even though once you get to 11, it's not useful anymore because this is always gonna fail after that, right? So in not every case you'd wanna do this, but it would be more efficient if I did something like four, I'll go const and I'll say number of, let's say my numbers, okay, in this particular case. And the first thing I would just ask myself is if the number here is greater than 10, well then all I wanna do is just break right? That's going to exit the loop because I don't want to beat it anymore because again, 11, 12, 13, all those numbers are going to fail. So why keep JavaScript going through each one? Nothing's going to work at that point. So I might as well just exit, right? Then you could say else. So this is the case where we're basically at 10 or less. Now I could say if, and I could say the number is basically divisible by two, just like I did above. Well, then I can just copy that little console.log statement. So let me grab this guy real quick, okay? And let me paste this in here. And you're gonna see the exact same thing twice. Let's go ahead and clear this out and run this. And you see you just get two of them, right? So the number two is divisible by two and less than 11, all the way down to the number 10 is divisible by two and less than 11. And then you just get another copy of that for our for of loop. All right, so let's wipe this. And I have one more example that I wanna to give to you. And I'll just go through this with you. Again, this is gonna be posted in the description. So what I have here are some menu items. I have an array one, two, and three, okay? I've written a little function here that says get menu. You're gonna pass in an array, okay? So the idea here is I could pass in menu items one or two or three, and we start off with an empty little string, okay? Then I'm using my for of loop, okay? So notice how I'm doing the destructuring in here. So the first guy I'm getting is gonna be the index, and then I have this guy right here, which is the food and the price, okay? When you do this right here, remember, you have to match what's coming back, okay? So the way this would come back is you would have an index here, and then you would have another array that would contain basically each one of those. So you'd have an array like this, pizza and $5. So you wanna match that if you're doing the destructuring. So you put your index here, and then your food and your price here inside the square brackets, okay? So now what I'm doing is I'm doing my string plus equals. So I'm just adding on to this. I'm saying the item number. So we're doing the index plus one. So you'd start at one. And then you have your food, which is coming from the destructuring here. And then for the price of, which is coming from the price here from the destructuring, okay? So then we have if the index is not equal to the array dot length, okay, the original array that you passed in, minus one, that's the last element, then we're gonna put a new line at the end, okay? So basically you just wanna do that. When you get to the last item, you don't need a new line because there's nothing else there, okay? Then you're finally gonna return my string. 
So I just want to give you a quick example of this. We'll go through menu items one, two, and three. So let's go ahead and console.log, console.log. I'll call this function, I already forgot the name of it, it's called get menu. So get menu. And then inside of here, I'm going to go menu items one. And basically, let me put like maybe a little border here. So console.log, I'll put a little border here for us. And then I'm just going to copy this. So let me copy this and let me go ahead and paste that in. And then I'm gonna paste it again and actually get rid of that because I don't need a border there. And then get rid of this, put two and put this as three, okay? So let's just look at what we have. We're gonna pop this open. Let's go ahead and run this. And you see it loops through as expected, right? So you have your item number one, the pizza for the price of $5, you know, so on and so forth. This is something we've done before with functions and arrays, just showing you an alternative way to do things. Sometimes it might make more sense for you to use the for of loop versus using the regular for loop or the for each method.